and uh, thank you everyone for being on the call today. Um, my name is Brad Flynn and I'm happy to say I'm joined by Michelle Pittman. Welcome along Michelle. Hi Brad and hi everyone. Looking forward to giving you guys a bunch of information. Now we're going to jam a lot of information into the next 30 minutes or so. If it's okay with you guys and we do go over a little bit, uh, please bear with us, but we want to make sure we get as much of this across as we can. You can be typing in your questions as you go along. We'll probably uh, leave them until the end. Uh, we'll just see how we go. So what we're going to cover today, we're going to talk about this thing you've been hearing a lot about called flatten the curve. So let's be clear on why this is such an issue and why we're doing all these steps that we are. We're going to look at the mindset for business owners at the moment. This is something that I've been working with a lot of my clients at the moment in making sure that they have got the right mindset. We're gonna look at the WHS implications. You know, where do you really need to watch out? Cash, cash is gonna be king over the next few months. And we wanna make sure you've got a bunch of strategies to help you with that. In fact, I'm gonna share with you today my cash flow projection that I use with my clients so that you can go away and do your own work on that. We're gonna talk about planning and communication, particularly in your own business, about what the things are that you need to be focusing on in both of those areas. Sales and marketing. This is one area that some people are thinking, oh, I need to cut back on this. No, my suggestion is you need to maybe look at this closer and probably go a bit harder. And then we're going to finish up with some Q&A. So welcome along, everyone. That's our roadmap for tonight in terms of giving you everything that you need to start to get prepared for what's happening. And make no difference that whatever plan you had for 2020 has now dramatically changed. And we want to make sure that you leave tonight with heaps of ideas. So we're going to start off. I'm going to hand it straight over to Michelle to start to talk to you about this thing called flatten the curve. Some of you guys might have seen this before, but Michelle, just give us a bit of a run through on what's happening here. Sure, thanks. Um, this is all about protecting our healthcare system first and foremost. It's um, by, by putting in place those individual and community isolation measures, you know, things that we're doing now, like the, the social isolation, restrictions on mass gatherings, um, working from home, even closures. What we're doing is really, um, allowing that our, um, our healthcare system to really uh, respond to this outbreak um, positively. So that if these measures aren't in place, we really do risk the health system being completely overwhelmed. So beds in hospital will be taken, medicines, surgeries, medical staff will be in really desperately short supply. You were telling me there a few, a few minutes before we got started about some statistics around why this is so important and the impact that it's having or has had in the past. Do you want to just share with people why this is actually so important? Yeah, so it has shown that, um, to be really effective in the past. So in 1918, um, the Spanish flu hit, uh, it was pretty much global epidemics, so uh, pandemic, so same as what we're facing now. But um, the cities of Philadelphia and St. Louis in America um, Philadelphia ignored all the health warnings, um, didn't put isolation in place, didn't insist on um, you know, isolation and, and cancelling um, mass gatherings and stuff. They had 16,000 deaths because of the Spanish flu. St. Louis, um, so just down the road um, from Philadelphia, they put in place all the so social isolation, encouraged um, personal hygiene and things like that. And they only had 2,000 deaths. So it was like an eighth of the impact. So that curve is probably a pretty accurate representation with the people who didn't do anything Absolutely. with 16 as opposed to the people who did with the 2,000. Yeah, and it's been proven um, in places like Italy now, which is completely shut down. But um, before they shut down, they, their hospitals were at absolute capacity. So people were being turned away at emergency um, mm. things. So, you know, imagine now if, uh, if we don't put in these measures yeah. And say if your child came off their, their bike mm. and getting turned away at emergency mm. because they broke their arm. And that's, you know, that's a good reference for us because sometimes we can be a little bit flippant about this, but, you know, what if it was costs you not taking the, the initiatives that we need to and, you know, a family member was affected. So if you're ever second guessing about whether you should do something or not, just ask yourself that, you know, imagine if you're one of your family members had something happen to them because someone else didn't do it. So we need to take full ownership around this. Mm -hmm. So, all right, now let's talk into mindset. And the key message I wanna get across to people here is today is plan, not panic, okay? First thing is nobody thinks well when they're planning, or sorry, when they're panic mindset. You know, your brain goes all fuzzy and you just cannot make head nor tail of a lot of things. So a lot of media around at the moment and what I've sort of been telling a lot of my clients is, 
what this mass media reaction is doing at the moment is making stupid people do stupid things faster. Okay, so stick to the facts. You know, in this day and age, we have pretty good communication systems, but make sure that you, if you find yourself panicking or you're hanging around panicking people, you may need to start to think about moving on to someone else. Be positive. Now, this is a, an opportunity for a lot of business owners to step up and take a strong lead for their team, all right? So just be really conscious of what's going on. Having a clear plan. So out of today, I wanna to make sure everyone has at least the top five things that you can leave this webinar for and go and put into place and take action on. Otherwise, you've just sort of wasted 30 minutes or so of your life. So let's get a good plan. Quite often, opportunities are wrapped in problems. And this is where real entrepreneurs come to the fore. They can identify the opportunities and things that are missing in the marketplace. And, and there is gonna be some huge markets come out of this at the moment because of the gaps that's being created. But finally, I think the one thing I wanna really encourage people to do is not have the news on in the background or watching the news all the time. Check in every now and again, but just be really cautious and aware of what's going on, but making sure that you stay clear headed. You know, there's no point in getting swept up in all the hype and hysteria because it's not gonna be good for you in the long run. And here's the thing though with businesses, there's this thing called the seasons of life or the seasons of business and we see this as a human principle, time and time again. We start out in summer and everything's great. So in a business context, we're making good profits, we've got great team, we're sailing along quite nicely. And then all of a sudden, we get to autumn. And in America, they call it fall. And it's probably quite apt at this point. And if I'm to use a farming methodology, when it's summertime and farmers see this time and time again, they're building up you know, stocks of hay in the shed, they're making sure they've got great cattle, there's heaps of feed for them, they're always preparing. Now autumn comes in business. We need to start to trim down. If we were looking at a farming analogy, we need to look at what animals do we maybe need to get rid of. In your business, there may be some team members that we need to look at closely and make some decisions around because inevitably winter falls. Now, the thing is at the moment, winter has come crashing in. We really didn't get much notice about this, but now's the time all the strategies we're gonna be talking about today are gonna to help us get through the winter. Because inevitably, and this is probably one of the biggest points I want to get across, spring will come. This is not going to last forever. And the opportunity that I'm speaking to a lot of my clients through Chamber and other businesses is be ready to accelerate out of this. Because when we do come throughout the other side, the opportunities are going to be massive and we're going to get back to summertime again. And here's the fact, this happens every seven to 10 years in business. You know, as you think back over time, we've had swine flu, we've had bird flu, um, SARS, we've had GFCs. It's part of the natural cycle. So make the opportunity here to learn as much as you can about what's happening in the winter time. Michelle, you want to just give us a run through on some of the things that people must be doing around their OH, uh, sorry, WH&S obligations. Okay, so one thing that doesn't change is your legal obligations to the health and safety of your staff. That's not gonna ever change. Um, and with all the uh, changes in legislation currently, um, it's only gonna get uh, more stringent as well. Now, COVID-19 can be classed as a workplace illness, um, and therefore there could be work cover claims um, associated with that. The standard claim process and uh, medical confirmation of that is required to make a claim. Um, so you do, the person does need to absolutely prove that um, they contracted COVID in the workplace. Uh, you can't ignore other legal obligations either. I mean, you've still got your work cover uh, requirements or your workers' compensation requirements, but you've also got your fair work, um, HR, IR type of legal obligations as well. And you can't also ignore all the other risks in your business as well, just because we're faced with this pandemic situation. So you, you can't ignore your manual handling risks and your chemical safety and things like that. You still have to run your business as a safe entity, um, even though we're faced with this. Um, one thing um, that I do want to emphasize is risk management. Risk management is, should be part of your business as usual. Um, you assess risks every day in your head. So you're looking at, you know, is the, is the road safe for me to cross? Um, is this 
piece of cheese in the in the fridge that's been there for three months is that safe to to eat of course it is that's wrong with it <laughs> just scrape it off it's okay <laughs> um let's not do that um but we have to put things in place for risk management around this virus and what we're doing about that and we've got some really practical effective controls that we can put in place you know, making sure that uh, people have got hand washing facilities if you can get hand sanitizer then stock up on that and, and make it available for people um, making sure that your workplace is clean and employees are cleaning really really well and often make it visible to your customers that you are cleaning the place as well um, working from home arrangements. Now, this is an interesting one because if you um, have your employees working from home, that is actually classed as your workplace. So all the normal safety and ergonomic arrangements need to be in place. We do have a link to a work from home checklist that you're uh, it's free to download at the end of the session. Um, please use that. Make sure that your employees are filling that in sending it back with photos so you've got evidence that they do have a proper setup and if you're not using your office equipment maybe you can think about you know sending some of that home to them so that they've got really good um, ergonomic arrangements at home as well excellent so and yes we've got some of those resources that we're going to share with you shortly um, so that you can take action on these things and that's the biggest thing don't just sit here today and listen we want you to take action so I want to talk to you about cash, all right? At the moment now, cash is going to be so important. So first thing you need to have in place is a cash flow projection. Now, you can look up, I've got videos on YouTube, uh, but I've also got uh, some resources. I'll share with you my cash flow projection that I use with my clients. Now, basically, your cash flow projection is your best guess at how cash will flow in your business between now and some date in the future. So. When I put this link up uh, towards the end of the program, uh, all you have to do is click the link and you can download it from my Dropbox. Within the spreadsheet is videos on how to use it. So make sure you do a cash flow projection and have got some optics into the future of how your cash is going to flow. Some of the things you need to keep in mind are around uh, when you're making payments. Um, so you need to think about reducing your costs. Okay, so now's a good time to go back to your bank and look at better rates from those guys. Um, renegotiate with your suppliers. When was the last time you went back to your suppliers and said, hey, how about a better deal? Can we take some things on consignment? Look at your home loan. You know, banks right now have to be very responsive with what's going on. Can you go back and fix your home rate so that you've got some definite future about what's going on? Um, credit cards, can you go and look at different ways to get credit cards reduced or changed or something like that? Renegotiate, as I said. If you've got uh, opportunities for suppliers and that, they're going to be hungry for your business because there are people who are going to go out of business here, let's be honest, um, unfortunately. But the upside of that is that there will be opportunity because there will be more customers in the marketplace, but there will also be opportunity to employ some great people. So go back and renegotiate with the people. Get credit now. Don't wait. Go to your bank, apply for extra credit, whether that's a line of credit with the bank, whether it's a credit card, um, make sure you've got it and that way you don't have to use it. Don't be tempted to go and spend it on silly things. You need to buckle down, all right? Reducing your cost. In your profit and loss statement or anything in your business, it must do, an expansion in your business must do one of two things. It is there to either get you a customer or keep you a customer. So if you need a basis to review your profit and loss, Use that to establish whether you need to be spending money on those things. And what happens is over time, we sign up for online subscriptions and things like that, and we forget about them, okay? Now's the time to go back through your bank statements and look these things up and go, oh, no, that's not really helping me get or keep a customer, all right? Um, talk to your bank. We had uh, our Chamber of Commerce meeting last night, and there's been a few people I've talked to today that the banks will be very responsive. Don't wait, okay? Get on the front foot. Go and talk to your bank as soon as possible. Uh, they're talking about freezing mortgages. You can put in applications for that. The Queensland government actually has released, uh, I'm not sure of the exact figure, but they've got some business loans that are available that you can apply for. And you can apply for anywhere up to $250,000 worth of a loan that is interest free from the government. Okay, so keep your eye on some of the different chambers. Uh, things. We'll be putting things like that out. 
but make sure you go in hard and early on this, get your cash flow projection done so you can see what's going on, reduce your costs, and all these factors are gonna help you sleep at night when you start to get some control of what's going on. The other thing is get your cash in. If you've got debtors that are outstanding, get on the phone, talk to them and ask them to commit. When are you gonna be able to pay that by and get them to commit? Because there's some psychology that goes on here as well. Um, they're gonna feel obliged to actually pay you back, but also the squeaky wheel. If they're not paying, keep ringing, keep ringing. Make sure it's your money sitting in their bank account. You need to get hungry and go after it. Quite often, if you're a husband and wife team, the wife is really good at this. We call them the velvet sledgehammer. All right, so make sure you're looking at your um, receivables and you're getting on top of them and don't wait because it's gonna be too late down the track. You need to get that money in now. Okay, we're gonna look at some planning work now. This is all about what you can put in place now. Um, think outside the box. What can you do differently? I've seen um, quite a few um, pubs and, and restaurants making takeaway meals and um, meal planning, um, doing home delivery, things like that. Think, think about what you can do with different skills um, and, and equipment. Ask your, your, um, your staff what they mm. think. Staff are always a really good one on this because Absolutely. they're sort of at the coal face and they're quite often have got some of the biggest ideas and breakthroughs. So make sure you're checking in with your staff. They're perfect for this. Absolutely. And consultation is also a, a safety legal requirement as well. But it's also great because when you get participation in a problem, then you get ownership of that solution. Mm. So ask them. Ask them. They, they might have different skills that you don't even know about mm, mm. that can be used in this sort of situation. Um, you know, communicate with your workers, and we'll talk about that in a second, but also um, plan what you can do around your award requirements. Know what award you, you've got and what you can do. Say if you had to do a stand down, if, um, if a, a worker refused to come to work, what if somebody um, comes down with a case of COVID? Or what if they um, have to stay at home because somebody is sick? Um, or, God forbid, if they, um, school, <laughs> school's closed down and um, the kids are at home. So, no. yeah, but we do have to think about that yeah. now and plan for it. Um, so there's, uh, there's some things to do. Look at um, professional development of your team as well. Mm. What can you do? What can you arm them with to come out of this situation bigger, better, better skilled mm. um, and, and hit the ground running? This is one of the things that I'm talking with my clients about. If it does slow down and we've got our cash flow projections in place, now's the time we're actually stepping up working on business. Okay, so we've got lists and lists of things that we're working on to get in place now so that we come out of the back end of this and accelerate. A lot of the business owners who aren't being positive are sitting on their hands and they're worrying and not doing anything and their head's going crazy. So this is a really good opportunity to get your team also, as Michelle's saying, Get them to learn enough, step up to the next level. And also working on your business is a really great opportunity at the moment. All those things you've been putting off, if it slows down, get in and get them done now. Yeah, all those things that you've been putting off, like um, clearing out your storage, uh, making it a, a cleaner, better um, workplace, um, getting rid of all the, the crap that you store in the back room because that's where it lives. You know, making that a usable place, usable storage place or um, repurposing that area. Um, I just wanted to highlight um, when you are planning, um, Fair Work Australia, um, Safe Work Australia and your state safety regulators and your workers' comp um, providers have a lot of information on the websites now and they've got a lot of um, frequently asked question pages as well so a lot of the questions that I'm being asked about um, can I do this um, with my staff um, if they come down with the case of COVID or if they refuse to come to work a lot of those answers are already um, provided in those um, facilities but if you do have any specific questions add it to the question and answer and I'm happy to um, to answer them uh, at the end. Okay, just what I want at this moment, what I'd like you to do is just type into the, the box, the, the comments box, what some of the big things you're getting out of this at the moment. So this is a really good opportunity because again, you guys are probably coming up with ideas that maybe we haven't even thought of that we can then share 
to some of the people in here. So I'd like everyone now to just type into their question box, what's the biggest thing that you've learned? All right, so while you're doing that, we're gonna keep progressing, but give us some feedback on what's going on for you guys at the moment. Let's talk about communication. Um, really, a, a lack of good communication in situations like this will foster that dreaded rumor mill, which is like a virus. It can get out of control rapidly and cause untold damage. So make sure that you, know, you are communicating, you are consulting with your workers. As I said before, they've often got so many good ideas um, and without an opportunity to provide those ideas, then you're not going to get that information and they're not going to feel valued. Mm. Um, getting their ideas, their buy-in, how can, help, can they help? You know, what about if you, um, instead of uh, giving them, get, getting them the sack, you know, can you reduce your hours for, um, you know, a certain period of time so we can keep you on mm. and we can keep your work made on as well mm. Um, mm. with those reduced hours. And that's, that's an interesting factor I think we're going to see happening here is communities are going to work closer together. We're going to sort of, I think, head back to some of the older ways we're really looking after our backyard. And this is something we've been working hard on with Chamber of Commerce, buy local. So, um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, um, and Tanya, hi, um, all the way down uh, in Melbourne, hope you're well. Um, start feeling lonely, so um, Zoom meetings to check in. Great idea. Yeah, make it fun, you know, just have a couple of sessions per week where you, you dress up in silly hats or funny glasses or you, you introduce your pets. Mm. Have a morning tea together on Zoom, mm. you know, mm. things like that so that social isolation um, isn't there. Um, but I do need to say, you know, introverts of, introverts of the world unite, you know, rejoicing. <laughs> um, and having worked from home for the last five years, yeah. um, it's, it's pretty much business as usual or unusual for me. Mm. Um, but being open and honest with your staff and sometimes showing vulnerability in this situation mm. is, um, is really important because everyone's in this together. Mm. You know, mm. to get out of this, hitting the ground running, we need to work as a team. Yep. Um, so we do need to emphasize the reason why we need to do things differently is to keep our business going. It's gonna look different. It's looking different for everybody, yep. but everyone has to pull together. Mm. Um, There's some great answers coming through here. Sorry, Michelle, we'll just right. give some feedback to people here. Excellent answers coming through. Um, Deb Faye, thanks for this planning, the takeoff after this is over. Looking at new ways to do things, this is the genesis of evolution right now. Repackaging skill sets, fantastic ideas. So if you've got a team, and even yourself, this is a great opportunity. Um, Tanya, we talked about, thank you for your contribution with the team managers there. Uh, need to get a cash flow projection done. Yes, I'll put my link up for that. That is such an important thing. In fact, I call it the sleeping tablet um, because it helps you sleep at night. When you can see into the future, you've got a pretty good idea about what's going on. Um, how do we actually making people, uh, making us sleep at night by seeing that we're going to have money in the bank, which is at the end of what we're trying to do. Wendy, fantastic. Uh, saving a customer or getting a customer, yeah. Can we hear more strategies about strengthen and keep? Yes, I'm getting to that. Our existing customers, absolutely. And Bevan, thank you. Product development, skills development. Yeah, what are the opportunities that are coming out of here for you to do better? So um, all fantastic answers. Brett Kelly, thank you. Staff upgrade skills. Yeah, perfect opportunity. If you've done really well recruiting and you've got great staff, you don't want to lose them. So how do we actually work to keep them and go longer and get more out of them, I guess, in terms of a, a fair fair, win-win fair exchange? Yeah. Yeah. So communication just doesn't um, stop with your staff. It has to be with your customers as well. And there's a lot of different things that you can provide to your customers, whether it's in signage or social media, um, or even taking some online meetings with suppliers and clients. Um, and I've seen some mm. excellent examples mm. of both um, the signage and social media use around that, yeah. um, particularly with my club clients. And if I do have any club clients on, on board today, hello, I um, hope to see you soon. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's best to be upfront about what your controls are that you've put in place yep. to not only protect them in terms of hygiene and, and cleaning and things, but what, what you're doing to protect your staff as well. Mm -hmm. Because without your staff, you can't open your business and they can't come and visit and buy your products. Um, if people are affected by 
changes, get on the phone to them and talk to them face to face. Um, it, this personal um, connection will be really important in terms of keeping those customers and, um, and, and showing that empathy towards them. Um, as I said, everyone's in this situation, Every, everyone's going to be faced with change. Um, offer substitutions if you can offer different um, options or different services, um, do so where you can. Um, and no one's going to be protected from the effects of this current situation. But if we can communicate openly and honestly um, and do the right thing for everyone, including yourself, yep. um, then we'll come out of it a bit better than hopefully others. Yeah, the really important thing to take care of yourself, absolutely. So, um, next one I'm going to look at is the sales and marketing part of it. You have to keep your sales and marketing going now. Now is not the time to sit on your hands and kind of hope and pray. Hopium is something you smoke in the hopium pipe and we're not about doing hopium, okay? So make sure you keep doing your marketing. If anything, you need to probably ramp it up a bit, okay? So have a look at what your marketing systems are and focus on them more and more, particularly around getting to know who your A-grade clients are, okay? I've uh, just been through an exercise with one of my clients in terms of their target market of small boutique breweries. Woohoo, what a perfect time to have a client like that. Um, so making sure that we're clear on what their fears, what their frustrations and what their needs are and then we're communicating in those terms. So write those ones down. What are they frightened about? And you know, apart from the obvious in here, what are they frustrated about? And what do they want in terms of their business? So have a think about what the products or services are that you provide and how you can help them overcome those particular, you know, pain or pleasure points. All right. So make sure that you're really, really understanding your clients. And like Michelle said, take them out to lunch and, and get to know them, find out more about them. Um, what about your A grade customers? What can you be offering to them? Now, you may need to repackage some of the things that you're doing at the moment. Again, like the delivery option that we were talking about with restaurants and that, but ask them what they want. This is one of the biggest challenges I see business owners do is we, we get in our little business towers and we think we know what our customers want. But the truth is we don't, okay? So you have to almost erase your mind sometimes and go back to your customers and, and ask them, what is it that you want? A great question to ask them is what is, it, what is it you love about us? Why do you love doing business with us at this point? Get clear on that and then do more of it, all right? Make sure that you're looking after them. Um, from a marketing perspective, if you're doing different types of advertising, go back and negotiate the rates with them because guess what? A lot of their hospitality advertising, all those sorts of things now um, is a bit of a challenge depending on their business, but your advertisers, you can sort of talk to them and find out if there's some better rates that you can get. But as I said before, the main thing you need to be doing is ramping up your marketing because particularly if you are slowing down, Get on the phone, direct mail people. If you've got people that uh, you've wanted to make contact with, send them a mail piece, follow them up. Keep in touch with your existing customers, which is what I want to talk about now. Now, if you've got questions, guys, you can start typing them into that question box and we'll get to them as we're rolling along. So this comes back to what um, Wendy was asking for about before. Repeat business, okay? This one, repeat business equals profit in your business, all right? So we need to be clear on who your A-grade clients are. What are some of the things that you need to think? Now, roughly speaking, when you look through all of your clients, about 20%, one in five, are gonna be what we call our A-grade clients. So have a think about it. What are your A-grade clients like? Are they, I can give you some tips. They probably pay their bills on time. They don't whinge about your prices. They're happy to refer their friends and family to you. They're happy to buy all of your other products and services and they don't whinge and carry on. So go through your database list and identify these people now, all right? First thing, simple thing you can do, send them a thank you card. So thanks for doing business with us. I'll bet no one's doing that in this particular climate of the market. You must keep these guys at all costs, okay? So you're gonna have them probably uh, marketed to, maybe, maybe not by some of your competitors, but make sure that you're out talking to them on a daily basis. Like Michelle said, keeping in touch with them. Tell them that you are in charge of the situation and things are going well. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Make sure that they have a sense of confidence with you. If they're sensing any fear or worry or, or concern with you, you need to address that. Half of my clients this week have been great. They've had the right mindset. 
The other half, we've had to talk about the opportunities here. And this is the thing. We've got to put up a strong face and have faith in ourselves. It's a bit like when we're kids and, you know, something might go wrong. We generally look to our mum or our dad. And if we can see that they're in charge, they're in control and things are going along, we feel a lot safer. It's a lot like that with your team and the customers that you're dealing with, okay? Repeat business equals profit. So make sure, define who your best clients are, work out a plan to look after them, think of things like taking them out to lunch, thank you cards, phone calls, whatever it is, and then execute that plan. Make sure that you're on top of this. And the last thing we wanted to talk about was some pretty common sense, but be a good human in this, you know? This will pass. This is not going to be a, a lifetime problem we're going to have to deal with, but I think it's time to really have a look at how we've been doing things. Absolutely. Sure. And um, if you have heard Brad speak before, you may have um, heard him talk about above and below the line. And now it's a really, really great opportunity for you to just demonstrate those above the line behaviours, your language and, and, your, and your actions. That means being a victor, taking responsibility, taking accountability, um, you know, having that positive communication. We do know that the anxiety and stress is real. We have to face that and acknowledge that. That's fine. But um, also, as Brad said before, you know, don't watch the news all the time. And if you are watching the news, get it from a reputable source. Um, but look after yourself so that you can look after your team as well. So if you go down, who's going to look after the team? Just as Brad was saying, you know, step up and um, and be that leader to, um, to to bring your team along with you. Just on that note of being a leader, I don't know, a great book for people to read in this instance, if, you know, again, you've got time and you're looking for things to do, there's a book called Extreme Ownership. And the guy's name is Jocko Willink. And some of you might have seen some of his podcasts and, and things that he does. But in this story, they're doing a training exercise. And, you know, if anyone's had a look at the water at Redcliffe lately, there's, you know, it's rough and choppy. And they have these two boats that have eight people rowing these boats in them. And their job is, in this particular test, they have to row out around these markers and then come back in again. It's horrible, you know. They're going into this windy surf and the rest of it. And one of the sides starts complaining that, He's got a bad team and there's, you know, all these things going wrong. And so what Jocko does is he actually, each boat had a captain and he swaps the captains. And what do you think started to happen? The team that was losing with the better captain actually started winning these boat races. So that's exactly what it's like with business leaders here. We need to be the ones that take charge, keep looking up and make sure that we're looking after our team. And they look at us and our clients and they feel safe and secure and they know where we're going and that we're going to be okay. Um, the other thing is check in with your team often, particularly if you're suddenly re um, working remotely. Um, as I said before, organise some fun things to do on Zoom or, or whatever, um, but also provide clear deliverables so that they do have um, a clear um, and meaningful work to do as well. Um, providing links to mental health and resilience sources. This is a time where people are going to need resource, uh, resources and support. Um, and if you can get th them through Beyond Blue and other great places like that, um, please provide those links to your team. Uh, we talked about the professional development opportunities. Take advantage of whatever online training you can get your team to do now. Um, really build those skills and, um, uh, and come out of this really well. Know your legal obligations. They're not gonna get waived. They're not gonna get um, reduced because of this. Yeah. Uh, you can't go beyond your legal obligations. Just on that, um, CCIQ have actually got an offer out at the moment. I've seen that if you are looking for help, they've got uh, an opportunity for you to register with them and get free HR advice, okay? So now's a good opportunity to investigate that. CCIQ, look them up, their offers all over their website. So capitalise on that as well. Um, and one thing that I wanted just to um, end on is, is being fair and kind. Um, as I said before, everyone's in the same boat. So everyone's facing um, the stress and anxiety and the uncertainty around this situation together. So just treat people as you want to be treated. Mm. Um, and, and if that boils down to being fair and kind, then that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but don't do this alone. As I said, we are in the same boat. Um, it's not a cruise ship, um, but, um, you know, 
rely on your friends, do things differently. Reach out. Reach out, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that's one of the things that we change. Just don't touch anyone. Don't touch. <laughs> no, no, you can do the, the woo hand shake, as I think as, as Bevan called yeah. it yesterday. Um, so now what we want to do is open it up to some questions and answers. We jumped a bit ahead there. Down the bottom there is our details. I also quickly need to take this screen down a little bit so that I can find the resources and we can post them in the chat box for you. So if you've got any questions, now's the time um, while I'm just copying and pasting these two resources. So the first thing I'm going to pop in there is uh, Michelle's resources that she talked about with regard to working from home. I've had a look through this, there's some really good stuff here. So now, has that worked? Just try again. So one thing, the, the first one that's being posted up by Brad now is the business continuity plan template. And this goes through um, basically a risk assessment of your, uh, your business and how you can start planning for um, these crazy times. Um, and there's also going to be a, the work from, or the work from home um, link is on there as well. Yeah, there's a good question come through from Craig. Um, how do you keep good staff through these times if you don't have enough hours for them? That's a really important question. Um, at this point, uh, I would, it depends on your business, Craig, but um, we talked about you know, talking to them and reducing hours if need be. Um, but what about you know, from a marketing perspective, depending on your business, Maybe you can get them out delivering flyers or um, maybe calling past some old clients or get them to maybe look at doing some different things that may help the business out. That'd be one of the things that I'd sort of look at as well. Um, there is help you can be getting from the government. As I said, I wouldn't be surprised if they have some support packages come out to help mm -hmm. people stay employed. We know they're doing that with the tradies at the moment uh, with their particular um, uh, incentives to keep the apprentices on. So just sort of, yeah, think outside the box, reduce hours, look at other things that they can be doing. Can they be doing courses? Um, yeah, again, look a little bit further outside the box. So uh, Michelle, this one's for you. Is there a possibility that if you in a position that you can't afford staff, can you talk about them, about the investment in a solution, being that that can continue to work but may receive a part of the sale? e.g. taking ownership, making an ongoing profit for the business, yeah? And they're all options that you can consider, um, Wendy, absolutely. Um, but it has to be in consultation with um, the, the employee and you do need to have agreement and it does need to be within their award requirements if they're, if they're getting paid under award. Yeah, yeah. Um, just some feedback, guys. Did that link for Michelle's thing come through? Can you guys just type into the box someone saying yes, it did or no, it didn't? I'm just posting up the no. Okay, all right, there we go. They all come through now. Michelle should have come through twice. And the Dropbox one is for the cash flow projection. As I said, um, you can download that from the Dropbox and there's a video you can click at the top and go through it. Um, and then my details are on there. You can also, uh, my YouTube channel has got a bunch of things on there about different areas of your business. Um, jump on there and have a look as well. All right, uh, any other questions? We've gone a little bit over time. Good stuff. So just on uh, what I might get everyone to do is quickly, if you can type in for your situation in the business at the moment, um, is things, have you seen business drop, stay the same or increase? So just type one of those things in, drop, same or increase. Increase, yep, thanks Wendy. And this is the, the point I wanna make is that um, some businesses are gonna do really, really well in all of this. All right, staying the same, yep, thank you. Um, the trick is to look up, as I said, in terms of keeping your uh, eye on the prize, so to speak, and focus on that acceleration coming out of this. The same, the same, some of it slowed down. Uh, a lot of clients found extra things for you to do, yep. Dramatic drop, okay, yep, excellent, thank you. Uh, business dwindled. So there's yeah, a real mix. And this is part of the reassurance across the board we're looking at is, yes, there are going to be some industries that dip. But also I've got a couple of clients and they might even be on the, the call here who uh, do cleaning products and they go on gangbusters at the moment, can't get enough of it in. Um, so big drop in customers. Yeah, excellent. Make well, sure that you're not excellent. No, but thank you for your feedback. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So 
What I'd like everyone to do now is just take a minute, go back through their notes and write out the top five things that you need to do. And while we're doing that, we might actually just have a bit of a chat, reflect some of the things back. So Michelle, do you want to go back through your notes and think about the top five things that you need to do? Okay, so um, in terms of safety, risk assess, um, if you're changing things, um, providing different services, do that risk assessment um, and put controls in place so that your, your legal safety obligations are still being met. You don't want to have um, a safety uh, claim or a prosecution on top of all this. Um, and that's the same with work cover as well. You don't want to have an injured um, employee or ill employee with the associated claim um, information as well. Um, if you're working from home, make sure that they have the right ergonomic equipment and facilities and technology, technology to use, but also a really clear understanding of what uh, their deliverables are going to be. Um, check in often, um, schedule in some fun um, into your uh, online meetings and things like that. Um, you know, if you have a virtual morning tea or virtual birthday celebrations, things like that, um, introduce um, the other team members to your pets or your kids, or both. Mix it up a bit, yeah. Um, communicate with your workers, consult with your workers, communicate with your, your, your customers. Um, acknowledge that it is a very anxious and stressful time. Get, uh, put, some, put some strategies in place for yourself to look after you, um, but also look after your staff as well. I think that's a big one. You know, people, entrepreneurial business type people tend to just go, 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 go and burn themselves out. Um, make sure you do have in your plan to look after yourself. I think simple things like some meditation, particularly with what's happening in our minds and all the rest of it at the moment, are always going to be very, very valuable to help keep your mind calm. Regular exercise, get out, go for a walk. Um, make sure you're sleeping well. That's a really important one. You know, do some Googling on sleep and so forth. But, uh, yeah, some of the guys putting in through some of their uh, actions now, ramping up the marketing, get the cash in now. Yeah, big one. Interest-free loans, yeah, with the government. Look that one up on uh, Queensland Government. have got interest-free loans for business. Uh, repeat business equals profit. Yep, pushing more advertising, letting more customers know. Fantastic, guys. If you hear an idea that you haven't had, um, make sure that you are uh, copying them down. Um, if, it, uh, if you haven't got the um, resources, type it in the box. Uh, I can see some of the questions and I'm answering them as we go along. Uh, and can't find the downloads. Hopefully you should be able to see this now. It should come through out the other side. If you get it, please just let me know. Um, excellent. Reviewing outgoings, repackaging skill sets, fantastic. Plan for the pickup. Yeah, think beyond the... A lot of times when we set goals, don't just have a goal to survive this because what I see with a lot of business owners is they uh, don't have a goal backed up behind the current one that they're achieving and they drop off the edge. So make sure you've got a goal set for when this is over and then you can pull out of it. So that acceleration thing that we're talking about, um, pull out of it, have a goal for Christmas, reset it. Uh, finding a way to improve the build, build business in this environment. Yeah, that's the other thing, guys. You will learn an, an immense amount from this experience. Take notes of what you're learning and put it away because this is going to happen again somewhere down the track. Then when the you-know-what hits the you-know-what, we can come back and start to actually uh, focus on what we did last time that worked and make it happen again. So there's a few people saying they're not getting the... Uh, the downloads, let me see if I can get them to come up again. So I've posted them into the actual, now I've, everyone who registered, you sh should have your email addresses. So what I might think, cause we've gone over a bit is resend them out in the email. To yeah, everybody says so that you've got them, if that's okay. Um, just don't like spamming people too much in the rest of it. So uh, guys, if you didn't get it, please don't worry. Um, and I guess, that pretty much covers it. Uh, if anyone's got any more questions, keep an eye on your email for the downloads. Great webinar, pleasure guys. Um, you've got our emails, send us questions. 
if we think there's a need to do another webinar like this with some more specific information based on your feedback, happy to do it. But, and just um, keep in mind that the, the information is changing um, and the, the recommendations are changing every day, if not multiple times per day. So if we need to do this again to update you on, on different things and um, how this movable feast is, is um, evolving, then yeah, happy to do that. All right, guys, we said it'd be a 30 minute webinar and it moved so much in the last few days. We've gone over, so thank you for your patience. Thank you so much. And uh, good luck. And no doubt, hopefully we'll see you around and, and be able to catch up. And uh, yeah, pick our brain if you need any help. In the meantime though, have a wonderful evening and uh, stay safe, look after yourself. Wash your hands. Wash your hands and um, take care. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.